So you've picked up your very own Galaxy S10 or Galaxy S10e or the 10 Plus and now you've set up all your apps, you've downloaded all your mail and you've did the updates and now you're wondering, well, what else should I do? So my good friends at Verizon sent this one over so I can answer that question and today I'm going to share with you 30 odd tips, tricks, features, settings that I set up on my Galaxy S10. Let's do this. Okay, let's get started. So, go to the top, go to your settings, go to the gear icon, go down to where it says display, tap on that, and what you're looking for is something called navigation bar. Let's start there. Tap on that, and here you can see the traditional navigation bar, but I want to swap mine to full screen gestures. That's one UI, really takes a couple of days to get used to it, but then you absolutely love it. So, if you're not sure what that is, enable the gesture hints. You've got three little grey lines at the bottom, but essentially what that means is swipe up from the middle, you go to the home screen. Swipe up from the left, recently used application. Swipe up from the right, you go one step back. Pretty straightforward. Right, next up, let's go to play with some quick setting options. Now, of course, you know that this is how you access things that you use quite frequently. Now you have an option to called button order. And now you can move things around, but of course you've been able to drag things and edit them in previous versions of Android as well. So this isn't new, just labeled, I suppose, slightly differently. Okay, what I want to show you is, once I've labeled it, I'm going to click on done. Right, now click on the three little dots. This time choose button grid. And now you have a choice. Do you like lots of icons on that quick access settings or do you want less icons? You can choose a 3x3 three three pattern, 4x3, a 5x3, really depends on your personal preference. Some people like everything in one location and that's cool too. And one more time, three little dots at the top and at this time we're going to choose the status bar. Now, on your status bar, because you've now got the punch hole camera right there, very few notifications can fit in there. So you can say, I only want to see three notifications or I want to see all my notifications. And here I have the facility to show the percentage of your battery or not. Right, from any of the home screens, what you can do is long tap anywhere that's blank or what you can do is simply pinch and it will take you to the settings. I want to go into the gear icon and home screen settings is right here. So the first option I play with is the home screen layout. Do you want to see all your apps or do you want to see just the home screen only? So depending which one you want, you'll obviously select it. Some people like to have everything um, on your various screens. Or some people like to have everything within the app drawer. Once you've decided, you can say, okay, now I want a certain type of grid patterns. Again, more icons, less icon. All this boils down to personal preference. The nice thing with Android, you can customize all of this. Okay, back into the settings we go, and this time the apps button. So, right now it's everything's in my apps drawer, but now that I've enabled the button, I've actually got a button that I can press and it will show me all the same apps. So, again, giving you options. Do you want to see that or do you want to simply swipe up and access all your apps? App icon badge. So, let's go into that for a second. Now, some people really freak out when they see 17 unread messages under one of the applications. This time you can choose to not show the number but just show a little dot next to it and you get the option to show notifications so let me show you what that means see i got an orange dot here which means i have something pending under this application i can long hold and it will just give me the shortcuts okay select remove etc so those are just the shortcuts now i go back and instead of having that i'm going to enable the notifications and now i can see under the icons it actually shows me the notification itself Right, back to the home screen we go and into the settings, we can lock the home screen layout, which means that we cannot move any icons around. Really, really useful if you have little kids and they keep on messing up with your phone. So as you know, you can swipe down from anywhere and you can get your app drawer, but you're going to go all the way to the top to get your quick settings. Well, what you can do, go back to the quick icons and go to the quick open notification panel. Enable that. Now, simple swipe down and my notification panel pops down. Swipe it twice and it gives me the expanded view. Swipe up, back to my app store. Really cool. Go into settings, next up. And this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the lock screen. And on my lock screen, what I normally do is I go to the always on display 
and there's a couple of options to play with here. First of all, I obviously want to make sure that's enabled, and I want to know that it's going to enable only when I tap to show. I don't want it to show always, I don't want to show it based on schedule, just tap to show, this way I get to control it. So let me show you what that looks like, so now it's off, tap it, and there it is, there's my notifications. Okay, back to the always on display, and now I have an option to go to orientation into landscape. Now I haven't seen that before, I'm not sure why we actually need it, but there it is in case you do want it, you can have your always on display in landscape, uh, I don't know. So I keep mine on portrait. What else can we do? Let's go back into clock style. I like to change this and I like to add multiple clocks on that screen because I deal with different countries, different time zones. So a cool way of doing that is simply go into this, add another clock and this time I'm going to select, let's just say, I don't know, let's go for South Africa. So S-O-U-K, spell that out. Right, there's Johannesburg right there. So we can just tap on that and there we go. And don't forget to hit the add button once you've done it. There it is. Now I've got my local time and I've got the time in South Africa at the same time. I can add up to four clocks, I think it is, and I can give them beautiful rainbow colors if I so choose. Okay, let's going back. What else can we play with? I want to show you something called face widgets. This is, I think this is new. I haven't seen, I've seen widgets before, but not on the face widgets. So face widgets, what you can do is you can enable the ones that you want to see. So music, today's schedule, the next alarm, the weather, etc. So I can enable certain things by simply tapping on them, as you know. And what it will do is, well, I'll get rid of Bixby routine. Let's go reorder them. So I want in a certain preference. So I want the schedule first, music last. And basically what this is, I can just swipe to the right and there is the face widgets. So quite useful and maybe they'll expand to more options in the future. Okay, next up, let's scroll down and this time we're gonna choose the quick settings, scroll to the right and you're looking for something called the night mode. When you enable this, everything goes dark. It actually helps visually, everything seems to pop a little bit better. Now it also saves battery as well. So for this demo, I can see the camera being reflected into here. So I'm gonna go and quickly disable that so we can move on. And speaking of a nicer screen experience, go into settings, go into display, and you're going to scroll down until you see something called the screen mode. It's currently set to neutral, but you can set it to vivid and it really brings out those colors and make the screen pop even more. Okay, let's address this little punch hole camera that's popping out here. And some people love it, some people hate it. Let me show you what you can do. So go into settings and you're going to go down until you're going to see display. Then you're going to scroll down until you're going to see full screen apps find that yep tap on that and now at the top you've got an option called hide front camera now if you don't want to see it sticking out on a white background you simply press that and then it puts a little black bar at the top and now it's hidden unhide it that's what it looks like see it's pretty obvious on a white background and then if you enable it well that's what that looks like kind of gets rid of that I'm actually quite surprised how many people turn this off or just forget to enable it. So let me show you, go into settings, go into biometrics and security and find my device. Make sure that is on in case you ever lose your phone, you can download the find my device app or through the web browser and simply find your devices. It will tell you where it is, you can play a sound, you can secure the device or you can just erase it. Right, and back into settings we go, this time display, and we're gonna looking for something called the edge screen. Tap on that. Now, you know that the edge panels are the stuff that's on the right hand side, and here you can select whichever edge panels that you want, the ones you're gonna use more frequently, most frequently I should say, and you've got something called edge lightning. This time you've got a couple of things that you can customize right here. So first of all, when do you wanna show it? Always leave it as always, because that's the point of this but now you can actually edit this as well. So firstly, you wanna do is you wanna set it to nice and wide. Now you can actually see it, it's nice and clear. This time you can choose the style, choose the style that obviously suits your personality, choose your color. And once you've done that, don't forget to go to duration and you're gonna make the duration nice and long all the way to the end so you can actually see it. Right, so make sure that the Galaxy S10 is running smoothly. You wanna go into settings, you wanna go down till you see device care. Now, top right hand side, you've got three little dots, tap on those. 
and you're gonna choose auto optimization. Now what that does, it closes background processes, things that shouldn't be running, and you can select what time you want this thing to run. Now bear in mind, it's not gonna run if you're busy using your phone. So I like to do mine at like 4 a.m. in the morning, for example. Three little dots again, auto restart. It is great to restart your phone every once in a while. Choose the date, choose the time, and it will simply restart it. Another little controversial one which some people like and some people don't, go into your settings, go into display and enable the adaptive brightness. Now this is supposed to learn your habits of your phone, what you do on your phone, which apps need to be brighter than others and it's supposed to automatically do that for you. If you wanted to do it, leave it on, if you don't, simply switch it off. Now if you do find that your phone isn't behaving like it's supposed to, you do have an option to reset and it's going to start relearning your habits. Maybe you used it one way when you got the phone, setting everything up and now you're using it slightly differently so it's probably a good idea to reset this application and let it learn again if you hopefully you find some tips and tricks that maybe you didn't know or you're able to set up your phone give this video a thumbs up if you liked what you saw if you're new here and you're into phones gadget apps tips and tricks don't forget to hit the subscribe button which is the head below check out some of these other cool videos down here and i'll see you on the next episode because that's tech simple cheers for now